what I really do think I am is a storyteller. Um, um, and even when I'm writing about art or other things, actually I'm really just telling stories. Um, and, and maybe, uh, um, two essentials for a storyteller is of course, not just the capacity to listen, but the appetite, the greed for listening, and also um, coming from far away, because um, um, stories are always taking something from one place to another. Okay, this is a tiny anecdote story for this. Okay. Um, Dostoevsky's novel, The Brothers Karamazov. I, mean, I looked on the shelves over there and couldn't find it. Is it perhaps in another section? Mm -hmm. uh, Russian literature or something? The librarian consulted a computer. We both waited. The wait was friendly, full of the special time that wanders in municipal libraries, like a solitary walker between trees in a wood. She lifts her head and says, <clears throat> oh, we have two copies, and I'm afraid they're both out. Uh, you want to reserve one? No, I'll come back another day. She nods and turns to attend to an elderly woman, younger than me, who is holding three books in one hand. People hold books in a special way. Mm. like they hold nothing else. They hold them not like inanimate things, but like ones that have just gone to sleep. Children often carry toys in the same manner. The public library in question is in a Paris suburb which has a population of about 60,000 people. About 4,000 of these people are members of the library and have tickets for borrowing books for a time. Others, others come there to read the newspapers and journals or consult the reference shelves. So, if one takes into account the number of uh, babies and young kids in the suburb, this means probably that about one person in ten has a ticket to this library and sometimes takes books home to read. I wonder who is reading the Bartos Caravan song <laughs> here today. Do the two of them know each other? I like it. Are they both reading the book for the first time? Or has one of them read it and, like myself, wants to reread it? And then, then, I find myself asking an odd question. If either of those readers and myself pass one another in the suburban market on Sunday, coming up of the metro, on a pedestrian crossing, buying bread, might we perhaps exchange glances that we both find slightly puzzling? Might we, without recognizing it, recognize one another. When we're impressed and moved by a story, story, it engenders something that becomes or may become an essential part of us. And this part, whether it's small or extensive, is as it were, in a sort of way, the story's descendant or offspring. What I'm trying to, to define here is more idiosyncratic and personal than a mere cultural inheritance. Because it's as if the bloodstream of the red story joins the bloodstream of one's life story. It contributes to our becoming what we become or what we will continue to become. 
without any of the complications and conflicts of family ties, these stories that shape us are uh, coincidental as distinct from biological ancestors. Somebody in this Paris suburb, perhaps sitting tonight in a chair and reading the brothers Karamazov, may already, in this very special sense, be a distant, distant, distant cousin. <laughs>